<laughs> and hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> Dramatic, suspenseful beginning yeah, I today. Was, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. quite sure what was about to happen. We were un, we were uh and we muted. were muted. Yeah, we had to be unmuted. Yeah. Um, so dramatic yeah. to mute, but yeah. So um, anyway, welcome to Trail Talk. Yep. That was a wacky <laughs> beginning. Um, anyway, I'm Edie. And I'm Mary. And we are so glad you could join us today. We are live at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma, in our classroom studio that we're in the process of changing over for our summer education program. Mm -hmm. Let me spend some time doing yeah. that. Three states, one trail. You should come by and see. We're paying an homage to Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Yeah. The route of the Chisholm Trail. Kind of about all represented in here. Exactly. So <clears throat> anyway, we are going to talk about some Oklahoma vacay destinations. It's about that time. Yeah, it's volume three. Typically, we've been doing day trips. That's what volume one and volume mm -hmm. two were. But um, I excluded day trips from this title. Um, even though these could be, these could be well, a day yeah. trip yeah, kind of thing. Easily in a day. Um, I just think that, well, we're going to talk about, spend more time. Exactly. We're going to talk about some lakes as a great mm -hmm. vacation destination for you guys, um, especially mm -hmm. Memorial Day. Yeah. Right it's around the hot corner. corner. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blazing yeah. heat. 100 degrees already. I have a feeling lake waters would probably feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. They really yeah. would. Um, so Oklahoma is nicknamed Land of the Red Man. They kind of a a Choctaw word that was kind of reinterpreted. Mm -hmm. um, it really means red mm -hmm. people, or there's some other variations I've seen. But at any rate, our name is derived from a Choctaw right. word, the name for Oklahoma. And there are more than 25 Native American languages spoken in our state. Um, and we also have diverse landscapes, mm -hmm. including lakes. Um, now, natural lakes, you know, if you guys remember the trail talk we did about Oklahoma oh, did, lakes, yeah. mm -hmm. um, the uh, Oxbow and Playa, 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 P-L-A-Y-A -A lakes are the only naturally occurring lakes in the state. And um, it, some of the playas get big, mm -hmm. but then the water, um, kind of dries right. up, evaporates out of them. If you'll remember, they're kind of like a low spot that feels kind of lowly. Yeah. And I bet they're not, I bet they don't have any water yeah, in this I year. Yeah, I bet they're right. Not it is consistent. dry mm -hmm. out there. Um, but there are over 200 man made lakes across the state. And so we're going to talk about some of those. And uh, we probably mentioned some of these when we talked about um, the lakes, the lakes and have. about them being reservoirs right. or, dam you know, being at, like, water sources for communities mm -hmm. mostly um but we're going to kick it off by talking about bro whoops easy there. there we are broken bow lake and beavers bend state park now have you ever been to no. broken bow um we went there in i think it must have been about 95 kevin had just finished his bachelor's mm -hmm. and we went there as a little getaway stayed in a cabin he would get up and go fly fishing and um, really loved it. Now the fly fishing is especially great at Broken Bow. They go out and um, put trout in. Oh, okay. Uh, once or twice a week. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a really great activity. So if you enjoy fly fishing, Broken Bow is the place. Yeah, the place to go. Um, it's down southeast Oklahoma in the down in the corner, um, right on the. Washita Mountains, the O U A C H I T A mountains down there in southeastern okay. Oklahoma, and mm -hmm. um, that it's uh, popular for people from Arkansas as well as Oklahoma because um, it, mm -hmm. it's it's right down there. Uh, that I think it might be kind of close to the Talamina Drive. Was that mentioned here, or is that, that that's going to be maybe another lake? But <laughs> But I thought it, that Talamina was down by that the may have been, but I don't Mountains. remember seeing that. Um, okay. Anyway, um, so you there's it's a great haven for bird watchers. Yeah, bird and watchers. you know, in my um, as I mature, <laughs> um, I I think bird watching might be kind of a fun thing to do. Like I kind of like I kind of like it. Uh, there's a there's a cardinal flying around. 
in my yard mm -hmm. and out in front of our house today. Yeah. And I was just, That's I was, yeah. and um, I, I feel like I'd kind of like to go, you know, look through binoculars and I can write see, down what I see, bush. yeah, <laughs> finding my little handbook and seeing if I could find what the, what species it was. I just think I might yeah. kind of get into that. But anyway, if I do, I'll go to Broken Bow and I'll update y'all <laughs> on how that goes. Um, but it's, uh, it's home to a lot of native bird species, which I think would also right. be cool, native okay. to Oklahoma. Yeah. But you can go kayaking, ca canoeing, swimming, horseback riding. horseback riding, hiking, scuba diving. Yeah, so many things to do. Mm -hmm. And one reason scuba diving would be so fun in this lake is because of the rocky terrain that surrounds it. Mm -hmm. It's very clear blue water. And if you've been to lakes around right. Oklahoma, they're and, pretty murky and yeah. you can't see anything. Sometimes yeah. it's probably best not to see. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of a... Um, that's a there are there aren't that many lakes right. that for, that give Have you that kind of water. Of water. Mm -hmm. um, so that that would be great. There, it's a the waters are mountain fed from the Washita Mountains, and so that's why the trout, oh, you know, do well there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they also, uh, I think they might have some. Um, I don't know what the kayak and canoeing might be, but it, I mean, if it's rocky like that, it might have a little bit of a rapid rights kind of well, thing. 180 miles of the shoreline there. True. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you've got quite a, quite a little area there to. And you can uh, stay on a houseboat. Uh, you can I, ride jet skis. You can swim, of course, cabins. Um, all kinds of recreational mm -hmm. facilities are just offshore. And all kinds of fish in there. Right. And not to mention the dense <laughs> forests. I mean, <laughs> this is the eastern side of the state. And so, uh, and with the Washita Mountains, it's it's just a lot look more for fossils, scenic. I say. Look yeah, look, look for fossils. fossils. I mean, I, this place is calling my name. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to get my little fossil we're, we're dinghy and my, my, lose I, my I binocular <laughs> Yeah, Y'all find me with like... <laughs> tree branches sticking out of a hat where I'm hiding trying to paint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the, the fish, I was like, there's I a whole bunch, large mouth, small mouth and white or sand bass, which is the state fish, mm -hmm. our state fish, crappie, channel cat, flathead, and various species of sunfish, all the fun fish to catch. Plus the rainbow trout. Oh yeah. Plus the trout. I mean, mm -hmm. that is like for a fisher, someone who loves to go fishing like me, mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. I mean, on Mother's Day, I caught bass and uh, sunfish at my mom and dad's. And uh, my dad and I talked about going catfishing uh, pretty soon because they're going to be uh, doing their annual thing where they go down and kind of nest on the bottom. Um, but uh, anyway, they're, you know, just like any um, kind of wooded, mountainous area, mm -hmm. winding roads, right. and lots of lots of scenery and things to really appreciate. Right. Yeah. Um, besides uh, the waters. But I love the, the whole idea of this rugged terrain. This is so different from oh, anything the else lakes. I mean, Duncan, here. you know, we have we have all these mm -hmm. lakes around here. Mm -hmm. uh, Borica is not far away, but they don't have any terrain like no, this. Nothing like that at and all. I think that's awesome. Um, and then hiking in Beaver's Bend State Park is, um, I, I think it must be a, a really great opportunity um, because of the terrain. Right. You know, uh, lots of trees, lots of rocks to climb and things like that. So I just really feel like that would be super fun. There is a... Um, there are RV sites, camp, camp site, yeah, modern cat cabins and rustic cabins. The rustic is what we stayed in oh. when we went. I mean, I think there was electricity, but like there wasn't any other. Appliance. There was indoor plumbing. It wasn't that rustic. But, right. um, you didn't have just yeah. a coffee can. No, we did not. Well, uh, and the park also has the uh, lodge too. The yeah, right with uh, forty rooms. And that all are on the water. The water. I thought, man, I that sounds fantastic. And uh, Continental mm -hmm. Breakfast yeah. is uh, with your room. Golf course. Yeah. So, you know, you can uh, look all these accommodations up online. Mm -hmm. 
you can go to Travel Oklahoma, OK, mm -hmm. Travel Oklahoma. You can look up Beavers Bend State Park. Any of those keywords will, will take, take you. you uh -huh, just Google those, and you can go there. But call or find the rooms online. Mm -hmm. um, there's an 18-hole golf mm -hmm. course, a 26-mile hiking trail. I mean, just tennis, volleyball, yeah. miniature golf. <laughs> Just so many things. Yeah. And amphitheater, gift shop, grocery store, yeah. restaurant. And the Hochatown State Park is mm -hmm. actually adjacent. And that's where um, the Lakeview mm -hmm. Lodge and the, and the golf course mm -hmm. actually are. But so they're all, all right considered mm -hmm. one thing. All right. But look at that. Look how that green. picture. I know. I just, I love it. <laughs> so I really think uh, Beavers Bend might be a great place, a little vacation destination. destination for you. So the next place we're going to talk about is Lake Eufaula. It's also on the eastern side of the state, not as far south mm -hmm. as Beavers Bend, but um, just a, a nice uh, drive. It is an enormous <laughs> yes, <it> lake. Is. <laughs> um, it, they have marinas, campgrounds, accommodations. A place I used to work before I got married, mm -hmm. we went there and rented a houseboat and just rode around on the lake all day long. <laughs> on this house by the same place maybe twice. Uh, right, you know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, it's but that huge. Yeah, it's a gigantic place. Um, every year they host a well-known tournament that attracts anglers from all over the country. They're fishing for largemouth, Kentucky, smallmouth and sand bass, as well as crappie and catfish, just, you know, all the usual mm -hmm. Oklahoma. Right. Um, but you can go swimming, boating, hiking, horseback riding, picnicking, golf, hunting. I mean, what you want to do outside, pretty much you can do it. Yeah, Lake Eufaula has a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, so it used to be called Fountainhead State Park, and there was Fountainhead Lodge. Mm -hmm. And it's a super fancy, nice, beautiful lodge. Yeah. Big hotel thing. Right. Um, but now it's called Lake Eufaula State Park. Um, anyway, uh, it's 102,000 acres. It's still, if you went there, we might lose you for a little bit longer. Yeah, I might get <laughs> it really lost at Lake Eufaula. Um, <clears throat> but there they have diverse foliage, hiking trails. There's a bluebird trail. Bike trails. Bike trails. They have a lot of, you can learn about animal and plant species at their nature center. Um, they have yeah playgrounds, disc golf, mm -hmm. which is super fun. I thought these pictures were just really pretty. They have kind of the typical Oklahoma, sandy, yeah, the Oklahoma beach, sand beach land beach here where you can park. Um, but this is just a really pretty view. You can see that um, vast yeah stretch yeah, of water there. Exactly, vast is a great word for that. Um, but it's just a just a huge place. Um, this is the, the lake that has the heated fishing dock. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can fish yeah, all year, year round. round. And that was one of my favorite mm -hmm. things when we talked about this And some place. of the largest fish have been caught there. Yeah, yeah, some of the, but I mean, a dang Loch Ness <laughs> monster could grow in this <laughs> water. <laughs> it's so huge, exactly. you know? Uh, yeah, it's great. Now they have these um, interesting, <laughs> <laughs> accommodations at Lake Eufaula that are called yurts, Y-U-R-T. Mm -hmm. um, Mary asked if I grabbed a picture and I did not, and I should have. I kind of regret that decision. Well, in my now. head, I see it though. Just the so, word kind of yeah, says it all. <laughs> it is one of those words, isn't it? Hey. It kind of sounds like a um, body function or something. Yeah, yeah I don't or German. I need to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else about that. Okay, okay. so a yurt, the picture I saw. They have three of them. It, it was kind of a round um, frame that was covered in like a tent-like material. And the, then the, the cover over the top of it made me think of like a circus tent. Like to a point. Yeah. And then it, the picture inside, you could see the, the kind of rails that went up and down mm -hmm. supporting it around in there and then there was one of them has a canopy bed in it some of them just have futons the canopy bed is in the honeymoon uh and it's a queen size log canopy but here's the deal before you decide yeah, you want to book um book your honeymoon on a in a yurt <laughs> on lake you you might need to know 
that mm -hmm. there is no uh, water mm -hmm. in your yurt. In your yurt. However, um, they do have other facilities. There are facilities. Uh, the hunt, the honeymoon yurt, uh, the facilities are a thousand yards away. So, you know, just take that. And you into, feel like you got to go, you might want to start right, taking off then. Uh, you know, kind of think this through. Think this all the way through <laughs> before you book that for your honeymoon. <laughs> um, but there's one is a ADA compliant. Um, so, I mean, these they have a setup right, for anybody. Right. If you want to go. However, pets are not allowed in them. But true. Yeah. But uh, they have heater and air conditioning, mm -hmm. bedding, microwave, mini fridge, electrical outlets, and, and an LED TV. Just no water. You get the TV, so, no water. Just keep that in mind. Um, but uh, anyway, I mean, it might be kind of a yeah. fun little thing yeah. to go do. That way you can say you did it. Yeah, but they do have other comfort stations throughout the park. Oh, yeah. They have bunk places, houses. bunk houses. They have places where people can have reunions mm -hmm. that almost a uh, right. hundred people. An airstrip can you can fly into as well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so then Lake Eufaula, there's also the town of Eufaula. Mm -hmm. And I did see a couple of pictures, excuse me, of that. And uh, it's just a very quaint looking, charming kind of place. A lot of little... Um, you know, lake looking homes. I mean, some mobile about homes. 250 things. probably were yeah. about on the shore. But like everybody has a boat ramp basically that lives around there. Oh, and it, yeah. it just seems like, I don't know, like a Margaritaville kind of, you know, you think <laughs> everybody about comes out on their boat and, and yeah, I, I don't know, it kind of looks like one of those kind of places. Right. And um, McAllister, Krebs, and Robbers Cave are oh, all within there. driving distance. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband grew up in McAllister. And uh, mm -hmm. jumping off of cliffs into the water is a big thing. A lot of his uh, high school <laughs> stories involve going to Lake Eufaula and jumping off the cliffs. So I could not let, okay, right. let this go, go by without, this is pretty stinking high. Yeah, that, I'm going to say that is 20 feet off the water, probably, at least. Uh, if that person's six foot, bit six foot tall. Um, oh, yeah. it could be 25 yeah. feet off the ground. So, uh, off the water. So, um, you know, if you go do something like this, you know, the rules, you need to know how deep the water is. Oh, of you course. don't ever go in head first. No, no, no. Um, but, um, yeah, this whole cliff jumping thing is a, an activity and evidently you get some fond Not memories that, you <laughs> that stay with you for a while. Yeah. Um, if you go do something like that. So check out Lake Eufaula. Um, again, a very fun place. And if you guys haven't been to Krebs, where all the Italian restaurants mm -hmm. are, just outside of McAllister, oh my goodness, let me tell you, uh, that amazing. And Robbers Cave is a super fun little park. They, well, they have their own water area, mm -hmm. but um, it'd be fun for a little day trip. Mm -hmm. Wilburton is the town where it is, and there's not much in Wilburton. There is a little college there, so they do have some. Uh, you know, things. Bailey's nodding her head. I think she did a little photography thing. Is, was that with at Wilburton? Uh, my sister went to Wilburton. Oh, your sister went there. Yeah. Kevin got his, um, what's the degree that's not an associate's? He got an associate's degree <laughs> there before he went to work at Halliburton. Yeah. Um, okay, next we're going to talk about the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. So this is also AKA Grand Lake. Mm -hmm. Now, as we're talking about these, I realize all of these lakes that we're talking about today are on the east side of our state. Uh, Grand Lake is obviously the farthest from where we are. In the northeast corner. Yeah, you fall is probably, McAllister's about a two and a half hour drive, so it might be three hours from Duncan mm -hmm. to you fall. Beaver's Bend might be a little further because it's further south. Um, Grand Lake is three hours from Oklahoma City. That's so quite a ways. It's quite a ways. It's, I mean, you're almost in Missouri. Right. By the time you get there, it's just an hour, I think, from Joplin, Missouri. Uh, I can't remember how far it said it was from Fort Smith. Uh, two minute, let's see. It's two and a half hours from Fort Smith, an hour from Joplin, three hours from Oklahoma City, hour and a half from Tulsa. So, I mean, it's way, way up there, up there. Mm -hmm. but it is also pretty massive. Um, it's it's in at the base of the Ozark Mountains. Mm -hmm. 
And so the scenery, it's green country up there. If you know how Oklahoma is divided into these five different <laughs> ge geographical right. areas and it's in green country. So it's quite beautiful. Um, the lake kind is, you can see like little parts of it from the I-44 if you're driving up to Joplin. Um, and you're it, sailing there too. Yeah, sailing out, what would that be? Mm -hmm. um, it was created in 1940. Pretty old. Yeah. Um, 1,300 miles of shoreline. Now remember, Beaver's Bend had 180 mm -hmm. miles. This has 1,300 miles of shoreline. How much did you follow? I'm looking. I can't remember. Um, I want to say it was 12. But fishing, water sports, picnic sites, group shelter, campsites, playgrounds, comfort stations, boat ramps, nine hole golf course, a lot of fun things to do. Mm -hmm. One of my uh, sons and his friends rented a cabin up there yeah. last year and spent the weekend at Grand Lake and went and played golf and did all that. And he said it was just a great <clears throat> super fun time but one of the unique things about Grand Lake is that from uh, October through March bald eagles yes and sometimes golden eagles can be seen at the lake now I'm talk about some bird watching mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I would love some of that and uh, that's like early in the morning mm -hmm. is the best time to go. Them. But I guess a lot of people mm -hmm. travel there. Uh, there's water fowl and all kinds right. of wildlife up there. Um, here's another cool lake. So see this, because it's so close to the Ozark mm -hmm. Mountains, like Beaver's Bend, it's going to have some rocky mm -hmm. terrain, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun for hiking right. and, and things like that. Um, they, uh, anyway, Grand Lake, again, Grand Lake, you follow Beaver's Bend, all of those, as well as the next one we're going to talk about, you can find all of the information about accommodations online. Just um, in the name, I'm sure. Yeah, one of the lakes, um, I kind of chased, uh, like, some accommodations just to kind of see what they look like. Mm -hmm. I think it was when I found the yurts. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Sure, anyway, I, you might know, you might pay attention because they said that they would rather have a phone call or a text than an on than a like a an email oh, or follow right. an online registration. So just kind of pay attention when you're looking your preferences to, yeah, to, to go to one of these places. Mm -hmm. But um, it looks like Memorial Day weekend might be kind of nice. So one of these lakes might be the place for you. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, Lake Texoma. Lake Texoma, <laughs> I've been to Lake Texoma. <laughs> a lot of us around here, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually um, stayed in a houseboat there as well. There as well, yeah. Super fun. I mean, like sleeping on a houseboat. The rocking motion is, that helps put you to sleep. yeah. The, I mean, the beds so aren't like super right. comfortable. Yeah. I mean, imagine a bunch of mm -hmm. beds on a boat, but. Anyway, uh, still very cool houseboats. Uh, that was that was a really Almost six fun. million come to the lake each year. Yeah, six million visitors to Lake Texoma every year. I was here. We thought we were special. <laughs> I know. I was blown away by that. That is a lot of people. I'm gonna guess though that a majority of the visitors yeah. are there for striper fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say um, stripers are kind of a hybrid fish, I believe, and they get super big. And this lake is, um, it's <laughs> home to some of the best striper fishing, I'm, I guess, around. There's yeah. like a, um, oh yeah, you can you can uh, do windsurfing mm -hmm. there. there as right. well. In yeah. fact, the people that I was with when we were staying in a houseboat, mm -hmm. someone had a, the wind, uh, the the, windsurf the thing, yeah, and you, so you started out in the water mm -hmm. on skis, yeah, pull, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, it lifts you mm -hmm. up and takes you back down hopefully I was easy yeah I was expecting one of my children so I didn't get to do that oh. even though I tried to convince everyone that it would have been okay yeah yeah there's water but it's there are, it's a good thing there are people in my life to tell me no that it's a bad idea hundreds of campsites hundreds now wait isn't like Texoma where they found that woman stranded out floating 
during that ice storm thing that we had in February, some woman had been out. Do you, am I, I making that, that up? You don't remember that? Bailey, do you recall what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Okay, so maybe I dreamed this, but I really thought there was some kind of crazy incident that happened, there. That happened at Texoma. Yeah, and there mm -hmm. was someone who had to be kind of rescued or something. Anyway, um, there are like little islands oh, yeah. out in Texoma oh, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Catfish Bay, mm -hmm. Marina, um, Boat Ramps. Dive fishing yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. fishing. yeah, for sure. They have a, uh, a, this is the place that has the striper guide. Yeah, I was thinking about how many uh, fishing tournaments. Oh, there's 50 largemouth bass tournaments a year on the lake. Yes. 50 tournaments mm -hmm. a year. Yep. That's for largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. That's not even for stripers. Yep. But some of these um, these uh, tour uh, the guides, the, the tri striper guides that take people out fishing, I have friends who have gone and done that and they've had pictures mm -hmm. and they have just the entire boat are these stripers just lined up, Man. like the whole behind, <laughs> which I mean, how fun. Just throwing them out and Please reeling them in. in. Yeah, super fun. Um, but Lake Texoma, I mean, you guys know this, it's located in the very far southeast corner of the state. Yep. One third of it is in Texas, two thirds is in Oklahoma. Texoma. Yeah, hence the name there. Mm -hmm. um, it is, uh, it's where the Washita and Red Rivers converge. And um, so it's, you know, it's a shared waterway. And I was reading something that to fish on the Texas side, you have to have a Texas fishing license. Really? You they can't, break it down. yeah, you can't use an Oklahoma fishing license, but you can buy a Lake Texoma fishing license for like $12. Oh, it's good for the lake no matter where Yeah, you that's good for wherever. So that's, I thought that was good information mm -hmm. that yeah. you, uh, you might need to know. Um, anyway, uh, again, look up things online. They have tons of campgrounds, uh, beaches. These, the beaches here, I mean, notice how. Uh, it almost looks like a golf course. Yeah, and they're, they um, go out slowly. Mm -hmm. And um, like there's someone puts a little walking path. Right? <laughs> true, that's true. Um, but they've got the buoys to mm -hmm. mark it off so the boats don't come in and wait so yeah and so i mean it's it's just a really great place so if you're a lake person um i'm sure you are aware of how great these places are yeah, but them yourself yeah but you know if you're just kind of thinking about something fun to do take a day or two mm -hmm. and drive to one of our great lakes here in the state all of these are um also near and uh, near enough to a town right. that you could stay in a hotel. Right. You wouldn't have to necessarily stay there on the site. Right. Uh, McAllister has a lot of hotels and you could stay there mm -hmm. and go to Lake Eufaula. Right. Um, Grand Lake might be a little harder because those towns up there are super tiny, but I mean, there's there so are, many Airbnbs and things. Oh, anymore, Airbnb, <laughs> that's a good idea too. So anyway, we're just here today to encourage you guys to stay in Oklahoma and pick one of these lakes as your vacay destination. You yeah, might, you might be cool. really glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> um, now tomorrow on Trail Talk, Chris Jen and Rudy Freeze are going to be here from the Kiwanis Club. Hey. And they're going to talk to us about, you guys know, Kiwanis mm -hmm. Club is uh, swimming lessons and kitty land. I was going to say tilt world. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're all thinking this time of year, right? Yep. So they're going to come on and talk to us about all the fun activities coming up. And we might learn a little bit more about Kiwanis and what they're all about. All right. So that's be good. sure and join us tomorrow. And, um, oh, wait. Here's another oh, great shot of Lake Texoma. Now you see a little rockiness yeah, here. Yeah. So, you know, water shoes mm -hmm. might be yeah. um, advisable, but um, happy trails and also happy summer. Right. We'll, I mean, we'll be back, but I just, <laughs> I just thought with Memorial, Day, yeah, with Memorial Day coming, that that would be a fun thing. Hey. And next week we are going to preview 
some of the uh, art projects we're going to be doing on Free Family Art Mondays. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to want to tune in for that. And Mary's going to get messy again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have a little art fun. A little art fun. So anyway, until tomorrow, happy, happy trails. trails.